Hey guys, it's Rima. So today I'm going to be talking about coral reefs. Alright, so first let's talk about how coral reefs become coral reefs. So coral reefs form when a polyp attaches itself to a rock on the bottom or on the surface of the ocean floor. Alright, I mentioned the word polyp. So what exactly is that? A polyp is the uh, individual coral. So coral reefs are essentially just made up of a ton of these polyps. Um, so what the polyp will do is it'll divide into thousands of clones and then it'll connect itself to another, or sorry, and when it connects itself to another, that's when it becomes a colony, which then becomes one single living organism. So coral reefs take hundreds and thousands of years to become a reef, and some reefs have been around for over 50 million years. So to form a coral reef, it just doesn't happen overnight. You know, these things, they take a lot of time, which is why they're just, which is why they're just so beautiful to look at and have in our ocean. All right, how do they get their colors? This is such a popular question that everyone has about these coral reefs because they're so beautiful and their colors are just so vibrant. So let's talk about how they get their color. A fun fact about these corals is that they are actually translucent. So to begin with, they're completely see-through. Now what gives them their colors is actually the algae that they host. And that algae is called, excuse my pronunciation, it's called Zoanxthalae. I don't know if that's right, but we're going to go with it. So there are millions of this zooanxalae that live and produce pigments in just one square inch of the coral. And since corals are essentially translucent, the pigments can be seen through the body of the coral. All right, let's talk about the different types of reef formation. So there are three um, types. There's fringing, barrier, and atolls, or atolls. I'm not sure on the pronunciation of that either. Sorry, guys. Um, so fringing reefs are found um, closer to land. These are the reefs that are usually um, found in shallow, narrow waters, and they're more, you know, recently formed. Then we have the barrier reefs. And I think barrier reefs are, you know, um, the reefs that come up to, come, that come to our mind when we think of coral reefs. Um, they are more broader and they're farther away from the coast. And then lastly, we have atolls. And atolls have a lagoon in the middle and then they're surrounded by large ring-shaped reefs. All right, let's um, discuss coral bleaching. Now, coral bleaching is actually a very serious um, thing for corals, and it happens when the corals get stressed. So just like you and me, um, you know, we get stressed, corals, they too can get stressed. Um, what stresses them out are, is like changes in their water temperature, um, changes in their uh, available nutrients and these can all cause the corals to lose their colors and become that you know that scary like uh ghostly bleachy color white um along with this white color that they turn they also become more vulnerable to diseases now corals depend on that algae that we talked about the zooanthellae and the zooanthellae is what um, gets compromised when the when um, corals face these changes in their water temperatures and their um, nutrients. So basically the zooanthellae is what's giving them their life. It's what's giving them their food and it's what's giving them their color. All right, moving on. All right, so I have this image for you, us to kind of look at and give us a better... Um, idea and to understand how coral bleaching actually happens. So as you can see in the first um, 
image, we have healthy coral. And you can see um, all the healthy algae that are surrounding the coral. And the coral is bright and it has this vibrant color. And then we move on to the second image. And the second image um, shows, you know, some compromising factors. Maybe the water's um, changing in temperature. Maybe the nutrients are not what the algae needs. And the algae is actually starting to become a lighter, you know, not as vibrant color. So then we have the final step of this whole process. And you can see that the algae has completely died off. So is the coral, and it has now turned that um, white color that is known as coral bleaching. All right. So where can we find these coral reefs? Um, these coral reefs can actually be found all over the world. And the more uh, massive, larger reefs can be found in the tropics or the subtropics, in the clear, shallow waters, you know, the waters that we always see um, people go uh, snorkeling in and they're always like, they're able to see those coral reefs and all the um, species that inhabit them. And then we can go to Australia, which is home to the largest coral reef system. And we all know what it's called, the Great Barrier Reef. And it is more than 1,500 miles long. So just a little um, side, like little fact, um, scientists have only actually explored 20% of the ocean's floor. So there is so much more out there, so many more, um, so much more information that we don't know. Uh, coral reefs that haven't even been discovered and who knows when or if they'll even ever be discovered. So why are coral reefs important? Um, coral reefs are important because they are home and support more species than any other marine environment. So they are home to over 4,000 species of fish, fish sorry, and hundreds of other species. Um, another thing that uh, makes coral a very significant part of our lives is that they are actually making coral into um, cures for cancer, cures for viruses, and uh, many other diseases. Uh, and then healthy reefs, healthy coral reefs can also help um, their local economies, um, most importantly tourism. So examples include, you know, diving tours, fishing trips, etc., etc. And coral reefs also help fund over a million, over millions of jobs and contribute billions, yeah, billions of dollars over the world. So we've all heard of the Florida Keys, right? Let's just talk about um, one little fact that um, can kind of emphasize the amount of money coral reefs can bring in. The Florida Keys are worth $7.6 billion. Aside from, you know, their big money factor, um, coral reefs are also important for the ocean and its surrounding area. So they can also buffer adjacent shorelines and which will prevent erosion, property damage, and even loss of life. They also protect ports and harbors. All right, let's wrap this up and talk about one last thing, which is how can we protect these beautiful coral reefs? So, um, I just have like three little facts that really stood out to me um, about how we can protect these coral reefs. Obviously, it's not like all of the things we can do. It's just three that I chose. So, one thing is we can help by conserving water. So, the less water we use, the less water waste will end up in the ocean. Another thing we can do is to not pollute the ocean. So the chemicals and waste, they're going to actually increase algae growth. And with increased algae growth, that can actually block out this coral sunlight. And remember I said earlier, um, the corals need that sun to produce the algae that um, are basically what keeps the corals alive and vibrant. And then one last thing, I don't know if 
any of you guys enjoy boating or know anyone who enjoys boating, but you can actually help by practicing safe boating. And what I mean by that is when you anchor your boat, you want to do it away from the coral and the seagrass. And instead, you want to um, be anchoring your boat in sandy areas so that the chain or the anchor, you know, doesn't um, hurt or drag out any of the nearby corals. And then we just have the work cited page and all the fun, you know, websites that I got my information from.